In chapter three, we're going to look at stoichiometry and chemical equations. So first we're going to talk about just the general makeup of, a, of an equation, where are your reactants, where are your products, and then we'll start balancing reactions, balancing these equations. Uh, then we'll look at different types of, of reactions. So when you are looking at a, a chemical equation, we're following the law of conservation of mass, which basically means atoms are not created or destroyed during the chemical reaction. So if you start off with four atoms of carbon on the reactant side, you better have four atoms of carbon on the product side. So you're not creating or destroying any atoms, but they are rearranging. Uh, they can combine in, in different with different elements to make new products. So chemical equations are the concise representation of a chemical reaction. And so again, in if you remember from chapter one, uh, chemical reactions, you're, you're, ma you're making new substances. So over here, you always have your uh, reactants on the left, and then you have your products on the right. So in this case, we have two um, H2 plus O2 gives you two H2Os. So you have reactants on the left, products on the right, uh, sometimes you'll have the state of the of the reactants and products of the state. That's like, is it a solid, a liquid, a gas? Is it aqueous? Right. So if it's a solid, you're going to see an S. If it's a liquid, you'll see liquid an L in parentheses um, or a gas. And then you can also have a Q, which means aqueous. It just means it's dissolved in water. So those are the four little representations. They're not. It doesn't really matter. Those don't, will will not matter when you're balancing. They'll be more important later on in, especially in chapter four. Um, but we will, we will see some of those states that matter, but don't worry about them for balancing. Coefficients, those are really important when you're balancing. So those are the numbers that you're going to add in front of the molecules that you're balancing. So you can see that two and that two. Those are your coefficients. Your sub, and, and they basically tell you how many of each molecule you have. So this two right here, this means I have two um, hydrogen atoms there. If there's nothing written in front of it, that means you only have one. And then you have two here. So you have two water molecules over here. Um, the subscripts are things at the bottom here, lowercase, or um, yeah, subscripts right there. They, that means, how, that tells you how many atoms you have in that particular molecule. So here um, in CH4, I have one carbon, I have four hydrogens. Um, here I have two oxygens. And again, that coefficient means I have two of those oxygen atoms, uh, molecules, two molecules. But that little two means I have two oxygen atoms. Um, I have one carbon and two oxygens, and here I have two hydrogens and one oxygen for every one molecule of water, right? So there's two hydrogens, one oxygen, and the coefficient in front means I have two of those molecules. So when you have a balanced um, equation here, you need to make sure that the number of each type of atoms are the same on both sides. So here I have one carbon atom, I have one carbon atom, and the, the count is here on the bottom. I have four hydrogens, here I have four hydrogens, right, I have uh, one, two, three, four, and then here I have um, four oxygens, they're red, so here I have one, two, three, four oxygens, here I have one, two, three, four oxygens. So I have, this is a balanced equation, I have the same number of each type of um, atom on, on each side. And when you're balancing, you're only allowed to change the coefficients. So I can put a two there in order to balance, but I couldn't, um, I couldn't add a subscript. So this is what they're saying over here. If I wanted to balance the number of um, oxygens, I can put a two in front of water, but I can't put a two after the oxygen because that's going to turn water into hydrogen peroxide, which is a totally different compound. So when you're balancing the, the, the equation, so what, what's going to happen is you're going to have a, an equation here and then you're going to try to balance it. You can balance by adding the coefficients. You can't change the subscripts. So if you change the subscript, then you have changed the, um, the compound. All right, so let's just get, practice with um, a compound here. This is, uh, maybe you know how to name it because you, you already went through chapter two. So this is an ionic compound. It's a magnesium and hydroxide. So it's just magnesium hydroxide. And suppose you're taking just like a piece out of a uh, chemical equation here and that three is the coefficient. So this means I have three magnesium hydroxide atoms, oh, sorry, compounds. Um, and I want to figure out how many atoms of magnesium, of oxygen, and hydrogen are present in this magnesium hydroxide. So I have, if I were to draw this out, this two, that subscript two, means I have two hydroxides. Whatever is outside of those parentheses means I have, uh, I'm sorry, whatever's inside those parentheses I have two of. If there was a subscript three there, then I would have three of those. So really, if I were to draw this out, I have magnesium and then I have hydroxide 
and, and another hydroxide. That's kind of what make, that's all the atoms that I have in one magnesium hydroxide. And the three means I have three of these. So all I'm doing is taking those um, that subscript and writing it out. Now you'd never actually write it like this. Um, this is just to prove uh, prove a point to show you how many of each type of atom you have. So if I just counted them up here, I have three magnesiums. I have one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, hydrogens. So all I really have to do is multiply the coefficient by any of the subscripts to tell me how many of each I have. So I have a, if there's nothing, if you don't have a subscript there, if there's nothing there, that means you have one. So three times one is three magnesiums. I have um, two hydroxides, so that two hydroxides for every one magnesium hydroxide. Since I have three of those, three times two gives me six. So I have six oxygens and I have six hydrogens.